Welcome everyone and thank you for attending today's town hall. My name is Mike Ozano and I will be moderating the session starting with a few announcements. This is the second town hall for the amputee coalition and these events are regular occurrences and we encourage you to not only attend this evening's session but future ones as well. Only the presenters and moderators of the session have their microphones unmuted. And during the session, MTT Coalition leadership will provide important updates and will answer questions that participants submitted in advance. We ask participants to submit questions in advance to ensure we are providing the most accurate, productive, and thoughtful responses. We will answer as many questions as possible today, but due to the volume, we may not get to all of them in the allotted time. Any questions we do not get to answer will be answered in a follow-up FAQ document. And any questions posted in the chat tonight will also be answered in the FAQs that will be posted and distributed in the coming weeks. If you're experiencing any technical difficulties, please let us know in the chat and some will be in touch to offer assistance. We do have a large audience, so we ask for your patience as we respond to technical issues. And with that, I would like to introduce Amputee Coalition Interim President and CEO, John Register. Welcome, John, and I will turn things over to you at this time. Hey, thank you, Micah. Uh, the first most important question is, can you hear me? That's the most important question. Uh, so that, I got the thumbs up from the team, so that's good, and we're off and running. So thank you all for joining us this evening to our second town hall. I'm so happy to have the opportunity to speak to everyone this evening as you're getting coming on and probably wiping all the hamburgers off your face right now from the dinner time that you're having, and I want to get to my dinner too. So uh, right off the bat, I can't tell you how important you are to the Amputee Coalition. I know you have some questions. We're going to get to those in a moment, and we have some, like uh, Micah said, we have them, the 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 prioritize all the we wrapped them all into one uh, focus point, and so we're going to answer the, the most top of the mind questions that you have uh, right there. But uh, I want to be crystal clear from the top: this organization does not operate without you. Point blank, full stop. It just does not. So uh, think about that from this day. You are really the heartbeat of the organization. And so I want to make sure that you know that that's how we, myself, the staff feel about each and every one of you and other stakeholders that we have out there. But you are the, you are critical to what we do. And so thank you for your service. And we have been through some, some times right now. I think if you've lived in the last two and a half years, you've probably been through some times and changes as well. Uh, so from my standpoint, I look at things from a lens as, a, as an amputee uh, and having served in a lot of different capacities. And I, what I see kind of in, in, in this community right here, uh, you're, you're kind of like the amputee chasers. <laughs> and what, what do I mean by that? I, I mean, you know, I was uh, in Colorado Springs where I live and I was uh, coming home from an, a, an event and I was making a turn onto our, our, our kind of our drive, our, our area of our, our town area where we live. And I saw a woman going across the street being pushed by, looked like her boyfriend or a tender or somebody, and she was an amputee. So she, she was moving so fast, I couldn't get back to her. So I went up the road, turned around, did a U, we came back, and she was already across the street. I had to wait the red light to get back across the red light. And they are already almost at the bus stop where they're, I guess, where they're trying to get to. So I whipped the car in there, uh, and then I have the conversation with her. Uh, and her attendant about, hey, have you heard about the Amputee Coalition? Do you know about the Limb Loss Resource Center? Do you, are you gonna come, come to our annual conference? And so that's what I mean kind of by the, the, the chasers around this community, because we don't want anyone to slip through the cracks, no matter where they are. And we know that the Amputee Coalition is, is, the, is, the, is a group, is one of the kind of, one of the only, the largest group that, that really captures everybody. And, and we just wanna make sure that it happens. So I'm, I was in the airport, I'm talking to a, a dad, his, his child rose out from the restroom and guess what he's in a wheelchair he's an amputee so we're having that same conversation i'm walking out of a coffee shop i see a single leg amputee she's using her crutches and i uh, you know i find out it's rudy garcia tolson's girlfriend so if you know rudy uh he's a double leg amputee swimmer on our paralympic team uh and so it's just we just have to be able to be in the community and find it and that's what you all do and once we do find those individuals you're the ones helping to with your volunteer services are really helping them to navigate and the roadmap of where they are. The, the reason why volunteers are important to me is because with the Amputee Coalition, I've worn so many hats. You know, uh, I, I presented at the conference. I, I've exhibited at the conference when I was working for the United States States Olympic 
and Paralympic Committee, uh, and I built out the Paralympic Military Sport Program. So that was very near and dear. I've, I provided sponsorships because of that to the, the clinics as well as to uh, Give Wings to Dream, if you all remember that program that was going on. Uh, I've done Capitol Hill visits. I've done clinics. I've been part of the youth camp as a guest speaker and a, a panelist. I brought athletes to the, 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 um, the youth camp. I've sat and listened and cried with attendees. I chose to come back to the AC, the Amputee Coalition, because I was doing all this work on the outside with the American Association for People with Disabilities. I still serve on their board of directors with, um, with the amazing uh, Ted Kennedy Jr. Uh, I have worked on policies with, um, uh, with the United Nations and with our own State Department. And so I wanted to really give back into this community. In fact, I brought a part of that program with the with the Global Sport Mentoring Program. I brought back into, uh, not brought back in, I brought back to our, brought to our conference a gentleman by the name of Yerlan Sumlinov, who is from Kazakhstan. And he came to the United States to learn how to structure his program so he could run a program in Kazakhstan. And the reason that's important is because Yerlan is an above the knee amputee like myself, but Yerlan never wore shorts. He always hid his amputated leg. And he'll tell you this for himself, you know, so it's not anything I'm, I'm sharing that's that's off color for him. He will share with you that when he, when I brought him strategically to the Amputee Coalition Conference, I think it was down in Tennessee, I believe it was that, that year, um, he walked in the hallways and he saw the 1,100 amputees that were there or live, people that were living with limb loss or limb difference. Uh, and he, he felt kind of out of place because he had his pants on covering up. And we call it what? Show your medal. And because all of you are so gracious in how you embrace people with their differences and embrace people. And, and of course, the conference always shifts the hotel space because people are like, man, do I, did I need limb loss to come to this, this place, this conference? Um, what it did for him was he came down for dinner that night, our opening reception. He had his uh, shorts on. Not only that, he had cut the cover off of his leg. Uh, so he's walking around showing his medal. But it didn't stop there because Yerlan went back to Kazakhstan with his daughter. He started walking around the mall in Kazakhstan without his cover on or his, you know, and have his, his leg exposed. So he's now changing the way people think about people with disabilities and people living with limb loss and limb difference in the country of Kazakhstan. And you volunteers are what make that possible. You cannot miss that point. You make that absolutely critical, absolutely possible, uh, and you, you, you do such fantastic work. So, and of course, I've served on the board of directors. That's why I wanted to come back over and, and offer kind of a, another voice to the community. So as the kind of new CEO, interim CEO, I can't uh, say without a doubt that there is not a person on this team who does not agree with me that volunteers are essential. If you heard anything else, it's not coming from this crew. It's not coming. From, it's it's uh, other noise that's out there. So it's not coming from this staff. I have been looking at it, trying to with a fine tooth comb. And you have a rock star staff at the Amputee Coalition. I'm going to tell you that right now. Um, so uh, what what else? Okay. So there's been a lot of change recently with the organization, and of course, the town hall is one of the ways we're using this to platform to to build the pathways to inform you all to make sure the community is engaged uh, and have these really important level conversations because we need to operate as one singular voice one direction one focus and so I ask you to begin studying again what the mission is of the amputee coalition I'm not going to go into it tonight what are the values of the amputee coalition I'm not going to go into it tonight too because we've got some questions to get to as well but that'll be for another topic conversation and we need to understand what that is because that is what that's our guiding north star so we're going to be mission driven and um and and, and value centric so we just want to make sure that that you are understanding what that is because as this leadership team comes together we are focused in on that because that was our, our mantra it's our call it's our clearing call and we will die on the hill for it uh so that's what we're going to be doing and so make sure you know exactly what our mission is saying, as well as the values around it. How are we going to how are we going to operate inside of the mission? Um, so, how many of you out there? Show of hands or something that you got out there. I can't really see your hands, or maybe you don't even have hands. So, um, how many of you have lived through the pandemic? <laughs> I mean, all of us, right? Because uh, we're still here. We're still here. Some of our brothers and sisters did not make it because of our population and the age of our population. Sometimes we're serving from, you know, uh, the pediatric to the, the geriatric. All of that is encompassed in the mission that we do. And so we have to make sure that we are 
concerned about our brothers and sisters out there that don't often get access to some of the cares and things that we have. And you are the, the, the staple holders of that. You, you, you are critical to that. So if I ask you how many of us would say we're living in uncertain times, the question I pose is, when do we ever have certainty? When do we ever have certainty? Because we are living in a time that has challenged us. So there must be some challenges or changes that we have, that we have gone through that has taught us to live in the, in the moment that we're in right now. Nothing has been the same. And so we have to begin to operate with that mindset. And I do think it's a mindset shift, and I'll talk about that in a second. But tonight, I just want to reaffirm that the organization's value and missions are central to the organization, and, and, this, and, the, and it is you who are, have to be that voice that continues that collective community. We are here to support and promote and grow the limb loss and limb difference community. That's what we are here to do. And I can't stress enough how important your voice is. Okay, I'll, off, that, off that train. Uh, this is my first time uh, presenting to you this evening, and I'm excited to be entrusted with this new role as we move forward. And there are numerous times that the organization had to have na navigated these major changes. And some of these changes amongst them are how we're navigating the leadership changes right now, uh, being back in person at the national conference, and how we're preparing to address the needs of the community and the growing number of people who are living with limb loss and limb difference. No matter what we will, uh, can we, what we do, we're going to continue our mission, and that is to empower every person that's affected by limb loss uh, and limb difference. Uh, I am personally excited to have an opportunity to get back together with everybody in person. Can you believe that? In person again in Palm Springs or Palm something, California. Uh, I can't wait for it because as I, as a professional speaker, have done at least 50 conferences this year in person, I have noticed some things. And so you may have noticed some things from, of, of direction from the Amputee Coalition. Some of that's coming from the experiences I've had from Dubai all the way to Desert Palm, uh, to San Antonio, up, up to the north and, and down in Wisconsin, and seeing conferences that are uh, 5,000 people all the way down to 200 people and the protocols that they're putting in place. And we wanna make sure that every person is safe. I will tell you this, Every conference I've gone to, every single one of them, someone has contacted or contracted COVID. I want us to be at a zero sum game for the amputee coalition. So I'm taking the best practices on all that and I will die on that hill to keep people safe, especially our population. So if there's any argument out there of, of what we're doing with our protocols, as I look at and have the team looking at different places, places that have done it well and done it right, that's where it's coming from. Policies are not emotional. Policies are, they are um, just the way we will operate and the way we will govern ourselves. And, you know, we want input from everybody, but, you know, we have to have a standard. And I think that sometimes is received sometimes with angst because it's different than what we were two and a half years ago. Yes, it is, because we didn't have to think about that two and a half years ago. So we have to have some, some protocols that are in place. And so these events like town halls and conferences, this team is working to really empower and ensure in the organization community. And I fully understand that we need to, to uh, expand and redouble our efforts to reach the limb loss and limb difference community. And there needs to be more communication. And we're uh, hopefully you're seeing that with the with the, the videos that are going out right now. And we need to keep the feedback loop open, concise, so we don't miss information. And there's no one guessing about what's going on. Uh, I have directed our staff on a few of our external stakeholders and, and some of our stakeholders that we're going to deliver factual information as quickly and concisely as possible. So if you don't hear it coming from us, it hasn't come from us. That's all I'm going to say. So the Amputee Coalition is the only nonprofit, uh, national nonprofit that serves all individuals who are experiencing limb loss and limb difference. And we remain dedicated to ensuring that no one faces limb loss alone, empowering people affected by limb loss and limb difference to achieve their full potential through support, education, advocacy, and prevention. That is our mission statement. I told you I wasn't going to read it for you, but I lied. I'm in there. I'm reading it for you right now. Go find the values. Though. Go find the values. Uh, in recent years, we have seen an increase in the number of people experienced and living with limb loss and limb difference around around uh, two, 2 million, I want to say, Americans are currently living limb loss and limb difference. And so our goal is to provide and continue those programs and support. So I want to talk a little bit now around mindset, uh, because I think this is where not just America, uh, people, I'm talking people individuals now, not, not in the, the, the community that we're serving right now, but just people in general, as I go around speaking around the globe, um, mindset is the biggest hurdle to people moving forward. Uh, I have, I usually tell 
story. I won't get into the story tonight, but I'm going to give you the context of it. And I was I was auditing a program at NASA. Uh, and they took us over to this ginormous pool, uh, the, the buoyancy lab, where the entire International Space Station is submerged underwater. Astronauts are working on the projects that they'll do in space under the water in their, in their full garb and their frog people in the water with them uh, in case something happens. And then in outer space, of course, they do the maneuvers to kind of build the International Space Station up there. But they, they're practicing under the water and they're practicing in outer space. Both of those two environments are very harsh, so our instructors said. But the only thing that makes the environment harsh is because under the water or in outer space, there is no oxygen. Under the water, we can't breathe the oxygen in liquid form. In outer space, there is no oxygen, so we can't breathe. And when, when people can't breathe and when, it, when the oxygen is being sucked away or sucked out of the room, people begin to panic. That's why those frog people are in the water. So in case some oxygen deficiency happens they can get the frog people they frog people can get the astronauts out and they don't approach the astronauts from the front if you've ever been a lifeguard or seen a lifeguard rescue you know that uh, if they don't have something to pull them out of the water with they will come from behind them to pull that person out to safety so why is that because when the person sees you coming for them they will panic and they will grab onto you then two people are having a bad day we know it physically that when COVID first hit and we first came and entered into the pandemic, the way that we surefire knew uh, that we were in a panic situation is we all went out and bought toilet paper because that was gonna solve COVID. <laughs> it seems ludicrous right now with all the things that happened, but that was the initial response and we were fighting over the toilet paper. This is what happens when information doesn't get out or accurate information doesn't get out. We begin to panic and make up our own stories. So that's why we will take command and control to make sure that the, the information going out is concise and that you get the correct information because your job is too critical to have frivolous information out there. So we're going to make sure that that and our team is, is right on target. Um, so the last point I want to make before we get into the questions is this concept around what I call the new normal mindset. And most people are jaded with the term the new normal. I always push into the space to try to shift people's thinking around common terms. Uh, the reason why people, I think, uh, two reasons why I think people are jaded with the term the new normal is because it's a powerless phrase when it's taken at surface value or it's overused. And most people think that when I hear it, I, they come out in two ways. They say, man, I, I just wish things would get back to normal. Well, that's, that's a past state that's gone. It's, it's, there's no way you're going to get back to normal because you should have learned something over the past years or whatever it might have been, the time frame, to get you to a different thought process. The second thing that people say is uh, it's, a, it's a present state of paralysis. Uh, I, I guess this is just a new normal. I guess this is the way we're going to have to do things and operate this way. No, it's, it's not. We have the choice to determine how we're going to move the platform form four. We have the choice to, to know how we're going to move that needle in that direction. So the new normal is not a destination. The new normal is a plateau by which we grow. It's a growth mindset model. How are we in, 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 the, in the growth mindset model? I think there are three areas and how we have to um, look at this as ourselves, not as individual, not as, in, not as in anyone else, not other people, not society, but what am I doing to advance this in the moment? What state am I in? Am I in the point of reckoning where I'm, I'm trying to get back what I used to have back after some type of trauma has occurred? Am I in the transition moment where I have a vision? I believe this way is going to be better than that way, but I got other voices internal to me or external to me that are trying to hold me back. For example, maybe other people believing for me what I can or cannot do, which is based on what they believe they could or could not do if they were in my situation or society. Oh, they're doing this over here in society dictates I'm going to do this. I should do this way. And if I don't conform to it, I'm going to be ostracized. But if I know that's the right direction to go, and I have these other voices pulling me over here, do I listen to those voices or this society, or do I have the courage to jump in the other way? Do I have the courage to actually take the hurdle that's in front of me, knowing that I might have to leave some other individuals be be behind because their mindset hasn't caught up to the transformation moment? And once we jump into that space, that is the new normal mindset, which is very tough. It's very hard to get into a new space and operate in that space when we have phantom limb, phantom limb pain or phantom limb sensation to what was just amputated. So I'd cut my leg off. I don't get that time back. I, don't, I can't sew my leg back on. 
So that time period has passed, but I have phantom pains that reminds me sometimes of a, of a past experience. Maybe sometimes you might be thinking, oh, this conference is going to be like the last conference. No, it's not. Full stop. We are in a different time period right now. And so if you're thinking that, then you're probably in the reckoning moment. But if you're saying, I see the vision, I'm, I'm beginning to get it, John. I'm beginning to see that, that we've got to hurdle this adversity. Maybe you're in the transformation moment. And if you have distanced yourself on the other side where you have done the work, my job wasn't, I mean, my goal wasn't to win a Paralympic silver medal as I did. My goal was to get up and stand on my, up on my good foot for 15 seconds and then for a minute and then for two minutes and then learn how to manipulate a wheelchair to a prosthetic appointment, learn how to put on an artificial leg, walk between the parallel bars, then walk on crutches, crutches to cane, cane to free walking, free walking to swimming, swimming to running, running, jumping to a silver medal. That process took six and a half years. It's hard to get ourselves some distance from that. But when we do, we've entered now into a point of resolve. I know exactly who I am. I know exactly how I am showing up. And now I can go back with that resolve and help somebody else on their journey. And that's what the Amputee Coalition is here to do for this entire community. We're going to help you through that process. And we're going to give you the tools that you need and necessary. And we need to hear from you what those tools are to make sure that you have the right uh, combination of tools in your kit bag to make sure that this organization not only blows it out in America, but I'm looking globally. How can we, in, in this market of, uh, of, of a virtual space like we're doing right now, impact a global market. So our work is more critical than ever, and we want to ensure that you are not just meeting the needs of the community, but exceeding them and raising them to new heights. We're going to speak with one voice. We are a premier group in the uh, country, and I'm eager to get to your questions and answers. So I'm going to turn it back over to Micah, the amazing Micah, for uh, some of the questions that we may have. Thank you, John, and thank you so much for those impactful remarks. We truly appreciate it. I want to reiterate to everyone that we requested participants submit questions ahead of this event, and we are going to address them as many as we can at this time. And thank you to everyone who submitted. We will provide links in the chat for additional information and resources, so make sure you're checking that and copying links as we go. To start, I think we need to first address the recent leadership changes and high turnover in the organization. So John, if you can give us a few remarks on that. Yeah, great. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, let's just jump into there. So as the, the new interim president, um, kind of reported, appointed by the board, I was on the board, and then I shifted over to the interim CEO uh, after uh, CEO Mary Richards departed on June the 15th, 2022. Mary was appointed to lead the organization in a time of transition. And so she came in and she was doing that time of transition during, of course, the, the, the challenging COVID work. And I just want to make sure that we are thanking her for her work and wish her well in her future endeavors. And I will serve as acting president and CEO until permanent replacement can be named. And so if you heard about it, uh, the new normal mindset I just talked about, I do not look backward except for historical context. What I do say is that at that time when uh, uh, I took over uh, as the CEO, we had, a, we had a staff of 13 trying to run the FTEs of 29 people with everyone else that was all over the place doing double duties, trying to, can you try to imagine doing a conference, the, the youth camp, doing policy work and all that stuff that we were doing with like 29 folks with 13. So I want to applaud the staff for the work that they have been doing and trying to manage all the questions and get to, get to everybody. I'm, I'm just amazed at the work that they are doing. And now that we're streamlined and aligned and we, we built more capacity and we're still building capacity against our, um, our, uh, our FTEs, uh, we, are, we, are, we are really positioned uh, strong. Like I said, I will continue to reiterate, I've done a, great, I've done a really good assessment and um, staff is here for you. They, they are rocking it. Uh, and you're going you're gonna to start seeing it slowly and surely. So when you, when you see it, my ask of you is amplify that and keep amplifying that message because we want to be controlling it from uh, headquarters out, right? If you're on the, if you're on the football field, you know, uh, if I'm going to use a football analogy, the players on the, the field, the, uh, the quarterback gets a call in in his headset from the, the offensive coordinator who's in the booth. Why is that offensive coordinator in the booth? Because he or she is seeing the entire field and they, co they, they coordinate the play down to the quarterback and then all the players get to run around because they have a different vantage point. And so that's what we're doing with the, uh, with the AC. Um, so at this time, I really wanna focus the community on making sure that they have the resources that is needed uh, and our current team is focused on those efforts. So I, I hope that answered the question as best I could according to, to what I'm allowed to say versus what I really want to say. So go ahead, Micah. 
And John, I think you're getting us all very excited about what's ahead and what is very fast approaching and immediately ahead is the National Conference. And we got a lot of questions about the National Conference. So can you discuss what people can expect this year? What should first time amputees know? Um, who, how can they sign up for clinics and overall where they can they find the answers to these questions? Uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to one more thing I want to clarify on the on the other question, then I'm going to come back and answer that one. So uh, in the past three years, there's been, you know, we, I, want, I don't think I got to the turnover rate. Uh, there has been much instability in organizational leadership of the, in the board of directors. You know, I think that was a question that could come in. And yeah, turnover is high. But, you know, when you put it against other organizations, the size and when there is a transition in leadership, there's always turnover. Um, and so we pay attention to that as a board. And you have to give, I don't know if there's a great book out there that, that if you really want to know how a board operates inside of and the way that the structure is, it's called Car uh, Carver's uh, Best Boards or something like that. So, and I have, if you want to, you know, email me, I'll get you that book, uh, Boards boards that, boards that Make a Difference. Uh, and it's a big, thick book, and it shows you how a board should be operating uh, in it. And, and we are working well with inside of that Carver uh, book. So that's, I know that's the board, uh, how that, I wanted to make sure that's addressed. Uh, but again, I want to also reiterate that we are growing against those FTEs right now, and we got a rock star staff. So I'll get back into the, the conference. We have a lot of things in the conference. Uh, I, I heard, you know, a person saying, oh my gosh, we ain't going to have a we want to have a dance. We got to dance. <laughs> Put that to rest right now. Uh, and because that's that's like the highlight. It's always a highlight for me. I love getting on the dance floor and shaking a leg. Boom, boom, boom. Um, so I want to, we, we truly want to make sure that uh, that these are things are out. So in the national conference, that's going to be at the JW Marriott Desert Spring Resort and Spa in Palm Desert, California, August the 10th to the 13th. Get your tickets if you don't got them. This is going to be a rock star conference. Uh, the theme is growing our community to shape the future. Uh, that's, I think that's a pretty good theme for right about now. Uh, uh, they're going to highlight ways to expand our community in every way. Conference offerings will have a special focus on health equality, uh, health equity, uh, equity and inclusion, and youth engagement. We brought the youth camp into the national conference again uh, because just because we're operating in a different environment you know so uh, folks that have been saying that well we got to have a youth camp separate uh, if, you, if you saw the data I'm looking at no we don't <laughs> uh, so we have to begin to make sure that we are being safe as the most safe for our attendees uh, the the conference is the amputees coalition's largest activity that reaches the community en masse uh, based on our founding principles including the importance of peer support and elevating expertise only gained through that lived experience. So registration is open. I think we have, I would, I have to really defer to Jerrica on all the offerings that we have, but we do have clinics that are gonna be there. We have some rock star speakers who are coming in that have that there, we have some case studies that we're gonna give information on and you are gonna be part of the experience. So we're gonna have our little phones out and blow up social media, of course. And we want to hear your voices out there and amplifying it. We, I just came back from the Disability In Conference and that's what they were doing. I mean, we're all, we're all over LinkedIn. We're all over the communities that they wanted us to push into. So why can't we do that? Why can't we just say the, the great things we're doing and shoot selfies with our friends and push that out there uh, socially and then and, and promote the sponsors that are that are that are with us uh, out there so we we are we have been selling them and just just have a, a great celebration of that so registration is still open we're working on additional sponsorships opportunities for those who are interested in that as well if you're out there and you know somebody we're still open up um, and we will also have a member we just actually sold so I think we sold another one today I want to say uh, we will have also a member of our team post the registration link into the chat so you, I think uh, Mike you already said that so make sure that you are posting it out and if if you know somebody, send it to them. Maybe you already signed up. Maybe you're not going to come, but send it to somebody that does. That's what the voice in the community is for. You know, I've, I've sent this to those three individuals that I met on the street. And uh, so I want to make sure that we do that too. We're going to try to get you QR codes that you can quickly get on your phone to go to the Limb Loss Resource Center or to a registration page that you can make this really easy for yourself. So for those who are attending and have a break in your schedule, you can also uh, check out uh, the sessions that are going to be there. I'm going to have a little session I think as well. I think I got to, again, I, I defer to Jerrica. I, I let the staff do the work and I just knock down the doors for them to make the, the work easy. Uh, and that's, that's, uh, that's how how I, that's how I govern because they, if, if there's there's no issues they 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 got this on lock. Um, uh, so the post event there are going to be some highlights. So Jerick, you want you want to chat with that on on uh, on some of the other things that are that are going on? Absolutely. Thank you, John. So we're Absolutely. so excited 
to be back in person at the 2022 National Conference in Palm Desert Springs, California. We will be meeting from August 10th to the 13th at the JW Marriott Desert Springs. And so we have a full lineup of activities starting um, on first with our board meetings and sessions um, on August 10th. And then we'll kick off our opening keynote session featuring John Kreisel. On, on Wednesday, August 10th, and, and then we'll conclude that evening with a, um, a opening reception in the exhibit hall. And so we have awesome exhibitors coming to conference this year that you want to make sure you come and learn more about the latest technologies, assistive technologies to increase your quality of life. Uh, we also have full two full days, Thursday and Friday, with full lineups of concurrent sessions, Again, um, some more keynote speakers on Thursday will be featuring Jill Jacobs, the commissioner from the administration on, on, on disabilities. And then on um, Friday, we'll be featuring Christy Hone, um, who is the, uh, she's actually connected to John. <laughs> But she's definitely part of our limb loss community, and then and then we'll be have a featured um, panelist where you hear from the from your board of directors, and then we will conclude on Saturday with a, a dynamic speaker with Stephanie Decker, who will come and talk more about um, living a uh, uh, the great life uh, as a, a person with limb loss and, and limb difference. So we have some great speakers on the lineup. Um, our clinics will kick off early in the morning. So if you're a, a, a yoga person, make sure you get your rest so you can be up early and be at the yoga clinic. We have swim. Um, our golf clinic is actually going to be a new setup this year where it's going all uh, all day in the zip hall, so you'll be able uh, to more people be able to participate in the golf clinic, and we also have um, the wheelchair tennis. So if you haven't tried that, make sure you you attend and, and reg you register to sign up for that. Um, we also, again, as John stated, we'll be kicking off the Friday night with our dance party with a live band, Summer Breeze. So we're so excited, featuring amputee musicians. And so we're just going to have a, a blast. If you have not registered, please register and tell your friends. And hopefully you subscribe to Emotion because the July, August issue features everything at National Conference. So as soon as you get it, be sure to read it and spread the word. Thank you. Thanks, Jerrica. And so I hope you're getting excited about that. Uh, it's, uh, and I, I know people are getting excited. Uh, because our registration has grown. What's the number, Jerrica? I'm, I'm not the, the number of growth. We're, we're, I'm not going to okay, say what the number so is, roll, but just the number of growth. Just the number of growth. Number of growth, we've come up over uh, 200. So since the time John's been with us, um, where we see a steady incline, I think it's because John is such a video star. So thank you, John. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not me. It's all of you. It's all of your efforts to push it out there. And when we're collective, that's what I'm talking about. But when we have a collective voice going forward, we begin to have one common uh, focus, one common goal, and we all get a chance to be participating in those numbers that we've had. I mean, we're almost, um, I'm not going to say the number because I got a goal in my head. Jerrica's actually a little bit ahead of my goal. So that's, uh, she, she, she wants more. I want more, I want more. Uh, and I got a goal in my head uh, as well. So I'm not going to say share the number. I, I'm superstitious like that. But uh, I just want to share that's 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 what I'm talking about. This, the staff has this on lock. And, and so we have some really great supporters that have come alongside us. And, you know, from the volunteers, from other sponsors and donors and things. And, you know, we have to go with what, who we have have and what we have right now in the current moment and that's what we have and we're, we're going to deliver the the, the the rock star conference for you so show up <laughs> that's all i can say is show up uh because you're you are a part of it you are you are the stars of it and we're, we're making it just for you so again don't think about the last and the past because that we we can't we can't even operate in that in that world any, anymore because we have to have these hey jerica would you please just kind of tell us around, you know, we, we took some information around Disability in and some other conferences to set our COVID policy, but we we also had, um, um, I, want to, I don't want to steer your thunder, but there were some misconceptions out there around uh, the COVID policy. What, what's this policy coming from? Can you just kind of share a little bit of the facts around the COVID policy? 
Sure, John. So I am happy to share that the MPT Coalition um, takes its responsibility seriously since the start of COVID. The MPT Coalition has had a COVID policy in place for all its employees and events to ensure um, it's you all safety and our safety. And so uh, this year we are uh, back in person. So you're seeing more information about that now. And at this point, again, it's a continuum from where we have been operating since uh, 2020. And so uh, we do have a tab on our conference page where it is gives more information about the COVID um, vaccination verification process. If you're going to be joining us in person in Palm Desert, again, our main concern is to keep you safe. So this is why the policy is in place. Please be, uh, be sure to visit that webpage, read all the information. We have a setup where it can be very easy for you to, uh, uh, to verify that you've been vaccinated and to bring that information that, uh, uh, that you've completed that process to, to conference. So that way you can uh, easily get registered and enjoy the conference. And if you are not vaccinated, then you have another option where you can bring in a negative test result uh, from a uh, COVID certified COVID test center um, and 72 hours prior to the start of the event. And we'll be happy to uh, work with you and get you registered as well. So again, our primary concern is you. We want to maintain your safety so that we all can enjoy each other and return home in good health. Thank you. Thanks, Jerrica. And so I want you to hear, because this, so, this was like when I came out, like all this misinformation was out there. The COVID policy was already in place in 2020. So just now that we're coming back in the conference, now people are paying attention to it and they're thinking we just put something new in place. No, it's been there since 2020. So squelch that noise or not squelch it, amplify that, right? We wanna amplify the miscommunication that is out there. That's just one, one thing that as a CEO from wearing the CEO hat that I'm imploring you to do because you're the you're the ones that 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 people listen to in the community. And so that's why we have to get you the correct information that is there. So uh, and like I said, policies are just policies. They're they're devoid of of emotion. <laughs> so so uh, just remember that when you read like policy and definitions. Okay, the um the last thing that I want to share with you is. I just want to make sure that you're you are going to those FAQs uh, that are out there on this on the site, uh, because we are making sure that we have the most up to date information there for you to communicate those those things. And and uh, I am 100% excited about being there with all of you. I can't wait uh, to greet you and meet you in the hallways. And please stop me because uh, I, I just want to hear your story and I want to be able to share and, and encourage uh, and be encouraged from all of you uh, amazing inspirers. All right, back over to you, Mike. I know there's a long answer to your question, but I want to make sure we had that done. Thanks, John. And I will do a plug for you and say, if you have time, make sure you stop by John's session um, during the conference as well. So I want to direct everyone back to the chat as well. Our team is in there posting all these links. They're posting really great information regarding the sessions, the clinics. Um, make sure you're going to check out those links. One thing that we kind of need to touch on, um, and Jerrica, I know you went off camera, but I'm going to ask you to come back on for one more second, if you don't mind. Um, I, just addressing the conference app, and, and I know that's about to come out, so if you can just touch on what people can expect with the conference app, because we have several questions um, about that as well. So welcome to the 21st century. We are so happy to integrate new technology in the NPT National Conference, starting with our mobile app this year. Uh, we are going green. We believe in saving the earth. So we are not printing the full conference program booklet as you're used to, but we're gonna facilitate you becoming tech wizards. So we're very excited to introduce our, our conference uh, event app this year, which at literally your fingertips, you can have all the information about what's going on at conference. So uh, the conference app, will um, have a full, um, I'm gonna say, uh, red, uh, 
a full lineup of all that's going on um, and where to go when. So we'll have the schedule there. We'll have all the exit evaluations for all the concurrent sessions you're attending. We'll have the full lineup of exhibitors and their booths. Again, locations, mats, um, you name it, will we'll be in there. So we will. We are happy to uh, be working with our technology partner to roll this out uh, this year. And we're hoping to continue this in the years to come. And we will have a help desk on site. So in case you need some assistance, we will be with, with you every step of the way. And there will be free Wi-Fi. So there should be no barriers to you being able to access our new conference mobile app. Um, and we will be sharing more information with our registrants uh, in the coming days on how to access the app and how to download it so you're ready to go at conference and you can get started early selecting which workshops you'd like to attend. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jerrica. And we did get a couple questions about the conference streaming. Uh, I just want to let everyone know that the conference this year will not be live streamed, but we will be capturing content throughout the conference and sharing that at a later date and time. So please stay tuned for those of you that aren't able to attend in person. There will be some takeaways and content shared um, post-conference as well as things that you'll see coming out on social and other places during the conference. All right, John. So now let's um, jump into some things on communication and volunteering. Uh, at this time, I want to ask you about communication and how people can get involved and stay up to date with what's going on at the Amputee Coalition. And you touched on that a little bit, but I'm going to ask you to dive a little bit deeper into that. Uh, thanks. So I guess I'll start with uh, that, you know, Amputee Coalition volunteers and community have expressed an interest kind of in, um, in hearing and engaging with leadership. Uh, I, as a communications guy myself, uh, I always believe that we need to we need to communicate and I've, I've said that we have to and, and not just communicate right two-way street but also make sure that what we're communicating is effective for the community that we are are are, are charged with uh making sure that they get the correct information possible remember when you go on an airplane the pilot often will say we're going to get you there as fast and as safely as possible and that safety really is all the checks that they're doing to make sure that that aircraft is going to get you to that destination and so that's what we're doing that's the mindset that we have we want to get there quickly but we also want to get there safely and make sure that everybody no one gets lost in the cracks so i hear you and we're moving forward in a way that will foster better relations and strengthen our ongoing communication so like i said maybe you've seen some of the videos i'm putting out there uh, i'm working closely with our communications team to to monitor the messaging and making sure that we're dialed in and correct look at that magazine that we just put out there uh and 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 then you know god give us feedback and comments on on articles suggestions that we might have and, and things that we might be missing right because we don't have all the answers that's why the volunteer community is out there to kind of show us what we what, what our blind spots may be every single one of us has blind spots and that's that's why it takes a great group of individuals to to come around and support the efforts so that we can have the efforts of the um, the amputee coalition uh, for who we serve even up front. So we're moving that direction. The town hall and future town halls are a part of that effort. So we're doing it. This is a direct result of your 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 comment. Uh, the, those videos are a direct result of your comments. So when you're saying that they're not listening, it, well, if you're on this call right now, yes, we are <laughs> because this is because of you. So that's what we're, we are listening to and paying attention to. But remember, keep in mind that if you were running a business and you had 30 employees and 15 of them weren't there any longer, what do you prioritize? And would you miss something every once in a while? And so that's what I want to kind of reiterate. And now as we're building back and ramping back up, we're able to put more and more things back in, in place. And we have some exciting things that, are, that hopefully will be coming in the future, but I got to run that to the board. So uh, more to come on that. Um, so we are expanding and redoubling our efforts to reach the limb loss and limb difference community. We have done two person, two person in training workshops and two in-person CPV trainings all for the VA partnership that we have. So those partnerships are still moving forward. Those that are saying that we're, we've lost those partnerships, no, we're still partnering and we're still doing programming and those programs are, are moving fast. Uh, hospital partners have done one in 
one in-person CPV training, and we're doing our next in-person training at the conference. So make sure that if you need that CPV training, that you're doing it there. Uh, the They're currently being done virtually instead of bi-monthly, uh, because again, we're operating in a different environment. And the next one begins on this weekend. And we're also launching a new ambassador program focused on reaching more members of the community. I, I believe, Zach, you're doing that. If you want to talk a little bit more on that, Zach, if you're, if you're available to do so, we'd love for you to uh, come in and share. Thanks so much, Zach. Yeah, hi. Um, yes, the uh, Regional Ambassador Program, uh, we started putting together in the early part of this year. Uh, and uh, Dustin, who is the Senior Manager for Government Relations, has busy, busily been looking at, at, at applications. And we are very shortly in a position to, to make those announcements. We'll do it at, at national conference. But um, I've certainly been running it up the flagpole within the organization, just to let everybody know that, that, that you know, we're continuing to move forward on this. Um, the Regional Ambassador Program is going to do several, I think have several positive outcomes. The first is that it, it creates an organization within the volunteer structure on the advocacy side of the house, where you can have these conversations about things that are unique to your area, since they're broken into regions. I mean, honestly, as somebody who had to go through basic training in July in San Antonio, you don't exactly have the same struggles in Texas as somebody in, in North Dakota does uh, in the middle of February. It's just a different, you know, it's just a different environment. You have, you, it's not only just geographical, but you've got political changes, you've got cultural changes, you've got all these different, different factors. Um, so it also will create a, a volunteer uh, mentorship program. So for those that are regional ambassadors, they can help train the, uh, they can help train the, uh, new, the, the new folks that come in and make them more effective at, at um, leading advocacy efforts. And finally, um, it will also allow us to engage in a greater way, a different way, but a greater way than we have at least in, in the past year or so at the state level, because this is, you know, again, recognizing that, you know, Tip O'Neill once said all politics is local. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's kind of a similar thing. It's even you know, at a, at a greater scale, it's regional. Um, and so the challenges that you face in one state, your neighboring state probably has similar challenges. Um, and, and while it may not be exact, they, they're pretty close. Um, so we will um, be rolling that out. The regional ambassador program will be effective with the new Congress. So that means in January of 2023, we're gonna host a training for those regional ambassadors that are selected. Uh, to make sure everybody's all on the same page. We understand where, where, where staff is. We understand where the regional uh, ambassadors are and we can get this thing lifted. Um, and so we're going to fly them in. Um, I've suggested we don't have it in Washington because the one thing that's guaranteed to happen if anything comes to Washington is that it stops. So we'll probably have it somewhere uh, outside of DC uh, where we can really talk and not be distracted by all the bells and whistles that Washington has. That's all I have, John. Okay, thanks. I appreciate that, Zach. Um, so, as you see, we have you know different leaders in different areas that are that have you know governing their teams, and that's 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 the way we operate with efficiency with people who have the expertise and uh, why they were hired in the first place to do the job. So that's that's what we have, and so as we say, govern yourselves accordingly to that. Um, the uh, I think the other thing is we have some other things that are going to, we're working for more inclusivity as well. Uh, we, it, it, as, as I look at the, the disability community as a whole population, uh, I go back to what my comments around the, the 1990 American with Disabilities Act, and we see that individuals with people with disabilities, the needle really hasn't moved that much for those uh, in our community, and I'm putting us in the entire community uh, right now. So maybe down a tick of 1.5% from over 70% that uh, do not have employment. So we're looking at ways to uh, uh, put things in for employment on our on our sites. Uh, we're also having a TV and Spanish captioning. I think Zach may have said that on the Spanish captioning, but it has to go beyond Spanish captioning, right? Because like I said earlier, we go from the pediatric to the geriatric and on the geriatric side, sometimes folks have hearing loss. So you might start seeing captioning at the conference. You might start seeing uh, people that are, are actually learning how to sign at the conference because we have to serve our entire population and not just those that just kind of fit a different uh, or 
a specific demographic as well. We want to be inclusive for all that are living with limb loss and limb difference. So we're also committed to supporting all amputees, no matter race, gender, sexual orientation, religion, ethnicity. And in this, we have sessions this year that support many groups within this community. Um, what else? What else? We have a new communication outreach activities in the works. Uh, and so the communications team has put together put together a communications plan. Uh, you're going to be part of that plan as well. So we'll be rolling out things that are really exciting that we get a chance to, again, grow the efforts. And I'm also working with the team to empower others in the organization to speak directly with the community and engage. Uh, so for those who are interested and want more information on like CPB program that we're doing, please mail uh, email the peer support at amputeecoalition.org. I think we're going to put that in the in the in the comment section, the uh, the certified peer program, peer support, I think that's in there as well, and support groups at amputeecoalition.org. Uh, in terms of the latest information, there are multiple communication channels that you can also tap into, and I want to encourage everyone to subscribe to Thrive newsletters and blogs, as well as In Motion magazine, and so if you haven't subscribed already, we'll put that communication in the chat. Um, so let's get connected, and let's keep on moving in the, uh, the conversation forward. Thanks, Micah. Excellent. Thank you, John. And we just have a few minutes left, um, you know, so we aren't going to get to all of our questions tonight. Again, we'll be posting those FAQs um, at a later date and time to the town hall webpage. Um, so please um, watch for those. We'll be sending them out uh, through some social too. So we will make sure responses are made for every question that was submitted. And John, we got a number of questions specific to individuals. At, so while we can't get to those, can you talk a little bit about some of the resources available through MPT Coalition um, very quickly in the next five minutes. Okay, five minutes. <laughs> She's telling me to land the plane, y'all. She's telling me to land the plane. What's to do? <laughs> so we're committed to in, uh, connecting with and empowering, you know, of course, the, this community. And we want to ensure that we have access to the educational that's and support and advocacy because that's what's inside of our mission. So everyone here has full access to the National Limb Loss Resource Center peer support visitors community uh, connections, you know, prosthetic finders, dis hip disarticulation guides, mental health resources through the well-being project and so much more. So make sure that you just kind of go on the site every once in a while just to kind of see what's what's new and what's up to date because you just want to know what your offer what what the limb loss resource center is offering for the people you come in contact with, you know, as you're out there in the community. Um, and so we have a lot of things that are, are shifting on that page and all the information that we provide is, is reviewed by the coalition's medical scientific advisory committee. They will be out there as well in California. Uh, this Our CIMAC committee is kind of helping us with that. Um, so just make sure, you know, we, we partner and because we don't have all the, the the expertise but what we do is coordinate it so that we can have the most uh, impact for it so if you have specific questions our our resource team is in place when you have questions i think we had um who was it was it that who, who somebody somebody got hired i remember somebody got hired on the resource team so i'm really excited about that and we we have some other hires that happened i'm, I'm super stoked about so but i, I got i kept i'm not gonna steal thunder and i know we got, got five minutes left um so we got their peer support uh, and the and the and the amputee coalition, of course, the premier organization for our individuals. But I, I don't know. Am I answered the question on on kind of those things of what's what we have going on, or I feel like I've kind of said some of this stuff already. I want to make sure I'm just kind of covering answering the question. Yes, uh, we're posting a, a number of resources into the chat right now. A lot of them okay. um, are are more have some specific focus, so make sure you check them out. Um, we also are going to be posting a contact information for if you have a really specific question and to your situation, please reach out to that email um, and con contact them. We are coming up at the end. You know, we've covered a lot tonight. We've gone through leadership changes. We've gone through the conference. We've gone talked about volunteering um, as well as the different resources available. But John, any final thoughts as we close out tonight? Um, you know, this is just the beginning of our ongoing communication with everybody, but any final thoughts this evening? Yeah, I, I think, you know, kind of re reiterating and coming through, it, it's, it's about the mindset. It's, it really is. And it, when someone goes through an amputation, there's a mindset shift that happens. When someone is born congenital, there's a mindset shift that 
that shifts that happens when that person finds out they're being treated differently or don't have access to things or access to care because of them being treated with insurance differently than other models. So we have to begin to operate continually and shift the mindset, not only of ourselves to operate with inside the community, but other people who are who are uh, who are with us uh, in, in whether it's policy or advocacy or volunteering. All those things are direct focus of what we want to make sure happens. Um, I'm I, I want the whole system to be like the system I get, the care I get with the VA as a service member. I really don't worry about a lot of this stuff. Why? Because there was an insurance thing that was set up for, for people that were in the military. But why shouldn't that be for every single person that's living with limb loss and limb difference? Why shouldn't it be? And, I, and I'm not resting until that happens because I, I shouldn't have to have a kid who's coming up and gets a limb for life in a state that won't, the insurance company won't offer but just one limb for life. Are you kidding me? That is something that we have to fight for. And so uh, as most you know, governments try to take stuff away, we want to encourage them with like the AAA study that we just did um, to, to push that push that space forward. And we need your voice. Everybody's voice is important. So let's shift the mindset and let's come into conference. If you haven't registered, get registered. If, you, if you're not coming, send somebody else in your place. So we, we want to see your face in the place. And I'll turn it back over to you, Micah. Thanks so much. Go forth, inspire your world. Bye for now. Excellent. Thank you so much, John, for all your great remarks tonight. Also, thank you to Jerrica and Zach for your expertise as well. I appreciate everyone taking the time out of their schedules and joining us. We hope you need to see you at the conference, uh, but this is not the last you'll be hearing from us. We have communications rolling out and information, more information coming out and more opportunities to connect with us um, as, the, as the weeks, months, and years to come. So thank you, everyone, and have Look a good Look at all the hearts. Look at the hearts coming <laughs> up the hand glass. <laughs> <laughs> had to point it out. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Have a good evening. Good night, everybody.